You're listening to 15 Minutes, where we feature community leaders sharing what the rest of us should know but likely don't. Hi, Chad Franson here, one of the hosts of Share Your Voice, where we talk with top-notch law firms and lawyers about what it takes to grow a successful law practice. This episode is brought to you by Gladiator Law Marketing, delivering tailor-made services to help you accomplish your objectives and maximize your growth potential. To have a successful marketing campaign and make sure you're getting the best ROI, your firm needs to have a better website and better content. Gladiator Law Marketing uses artificial intelligence, machine learning, and decades of experience to outperform the competition. To learn more, go to gladiatorlawmarketing.com where you can schedule a free marketing consultation. Patrick Murdoch is the founder and managing attorney at Murdoch Legal, a boutique law firm specializing in corporate and transactional law. Prior to founding Murdoch Legal, Patrick received his legal training while working as an attorney at the offices of Shearman and Sterling LLP, a leading New York and international law firm. He left Shearman in 2011 and transitioned from the world of big law to working hands-on with clients ranging from private equity firms to tech startups. Hey, Patrick, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you? Pleasure to be here. I'm very well, Chad. How are you? Great. Thank you. Hey, uh, tell me a little bit more then about Murdoch Legal and what you do. So I started Murdoch Legal about 10 years ago. I was transitioning out of big law. Um, essentially, I didn't want to work 100 hours a week. I wanted a little bit more uh, you know, lifestyle, uh, focused career. I was thinking about raising a family, uh, but I didn't want to let go of, uh, of law. Um, still interested me. And I thought I'd have a little bit more flexibility if I launched my own law firm. Um, so 10 years ago, I started working with uh, mainly tech startups in uh, the tri-state area, New York, uh, Connecticut, New Jersey. Um, and then I, uh, yeah, I had a, a you know, handful of tech startup clients uh, when I was launching. And then I, I linked up with a, uh, a company called Entra based out of San Francisco that provides like a legal, legal AI platform. And uh, Entra started um, pairing me with different private equity firms like you know, Blackstone, Fortress, you know, some, of, some of the biggest name uh, private equity firms in the world. Um, and I started processing their uh, legal documents, legal forms, uh, pretty much all the, all the subsidiary legal work, uh, except for the kind of main purchase agreements um, and kind of the, uh, you know, the, the, the center, the, 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 the main transactional agreements that they would outsource to, you know, more experienced M&A counsel or big law. Uh, I would handle all the, the other agreements where they don't want to be paying, you know, as a partner, a thousand dollars an hour to review an engagement letter and a consulting agreement or an NDA. Um, so I carved out a nice little niche for myself, uh, working with private equity firms, uh, pension funds, hedge funds, investment banks, and I still maintained a, uh, a handful of startup clients. Uh, fast forward 10 years later, I was, you know, slowly grew my team. Uh, we are now eight people. I have uh, four people full-time salaried, uh, three people independent contractors, and then there's myself. Um, I process it about, my firm processes about a thousand contracts a month. Uh, wow. our revenues are roughly between 1.5 and 2 million annually. Um, uh, and I have a great time. I, my quality of life is amazing. I have two kids. Uh, you know, I work 30 to 40 hours a week, which is very reasonable. It's kind of perfect. I do lots of traveling. Um, and my, my law firm is unique because it's entirely virtual. So I have very little overhead. Uh, everyone works from home. Um, and everyone uh, hits their deadlines. My clients are happy, uh, and I continue to see positive growth. So that's that's about that's about it. I, I'll add that I'm a I'm a New York lawyer, um, and in my team I have other uh, New York barred lawyers, uh, and then I also have a presence in Canada. So I have quite a bit of uh, Canadian attorneys, a few Canadian attorneys as well who work for me, and one one attorney in Paris. Oh, wow, awesome. So you you know you said that uh, you said that your one of your goals was to kind of give yourself a little bit more flexibility, not make work like a, the the center of your life. Um, and it sounds like you've been successful in that mission. Was that always the case? Um, since that's the time you you founded your own law firm. Um, it, I no, I I would say the first 
couple of years when it was just me or when I was onboarding and training the, my first associates or my, the first people that started to work for me, I definitely had to grind a little bit more. You know, I was, I, it was me in the trenches uh, processing every, every contract I could you know, get a hold of. And I was hang, I hung a virtual shingle and I would take any work I could get, whether it's, you know, reviewing website terms or privacy policies, you know, for just anything. Um, and I, I was really hustling to, to build a name for my law firm and, and get and secure clients. Um, mm -hmm. But once I, once I had an associate in place that I trusted and that was trained up uh, and that I gradually learned how to, how to delegate work, um, that's when my time started to free up a little bit. Um, and now, as I said, I have seven people working under me and I have a hierarchy in place. And you know, the mo more senior associates are training the more junior ones. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a matter of kind of fine tuning the machine over time, but definitely at the start I was, I was grinding more. Yeah. Um, at what point did you feel like it started to smooth out where you were able to, you know, bring on an associate and, um, you know, delegate work? Yeah. Was it's there like always... a moment that hit you? Yeah, there was. Um, so the, the volume of work just got a little bit too high for one person to handle. I was, I, I, I linked up with my first private equity firm client as Blackstone. They were sending me a lot of agreements and, you know, I was just spending my, my days processing you know, NDAs and engagement letters for, for, for this one client. Uh, and I just said to myself, yeah, I can't, this is not why I started my own firm. Um, I started my own firm to have more flexibility, not less. So, yeah, it was it was a tough leap to say, okay, I need to hire someone to help me because you got to pay that person, and you're not you're not sure your revenues are going to be able to sustain paying yourself and another person. But I I took that leap. I uh, you know it was a little bit of a risk, and you know, once I had this other person trained, and I was satisfied with her work product, and and I felt that the client also trusted her work product. Yeah, I remember the first time I, I was able to go on a vacation uh, with my family. We went down to Mexico and I had I let this other person kind of manage the firm while I was taking a, I took a couple weeks off and she did an amazing job and uh, I was able to totally unplug. And that's when it kind of hit me like, wow, this, you know, this is uh, this is sustainable uh, and this will allow me to grow in a manner that that. I can still have flexibility to be a dad and to you know pursue some of my hobbies like mountain biking or rock climbing and road biking. Um, it was kind of this this eureka moment. I remember when I was on that vacation in Mexico. Sure, sure. Yeah, I've talked to some people who say that uh, you know they were very hesitant to to bring on staff. Like you said, you, you have to pay them, and then you know you maybe you don't trust them right away, or you you don't you're not comfortable delegating yet. But then they decided that that's the best thing they ever did. Yeah, I mean, a lot of lawyers are very controlling and are are kind of risk averse. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea of handing off, you know, this business that they've built on their hard work to someone else, or you know, delegating a complicated assignment, you know, that you could risk losing this relationship with the client that you spent all this time building. It's very hard. But if you want to, if you want to take the shift shift from lawyer to entrepreneur. Um, you need you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to trust your people. Um, and yeah, if you do a good job training them, uh, and you you get that trust in place, then that's that's when law can really work out. I mean, that's that's when it really started working out for me. How and when did you know you wanted to become an attorney? Um, I was in government before I was in law. Um. And I, I, I had a, a BA in philosophy um, and the government work wasn't quite intellectually stimulating enough for me. Um, and I thought I thought if I went back to school and, and became a lawyer, I'd, I would have a little bit more intellectual stimulation um, and a little bit more room for growth. I saw, you know, 
lawyers, you can go in many different directions. You can go in the criminal direction, you got litigation, you become a tax lawyer, IP lawyer, you can go work for the World Bank, or you can start your own business like I ended up doing. And I, I wasn't sure what direction I was going to take my legal career, but I, I wanted it, I wanted the potential for 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 the opportunities a law degree would provide. So I, I was in government, I wasn't particularly satisfied, and I I applied to some law schools. I got in and I said, you know what, let's let's do this and see where the the path would would lead me. And it led me to to big law. I took a job with a big law firm in New York for five years. And I was, you know, as I said, working 80 or 100 hours a week, which was fun, but I knew it wasn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. When you, uh, while you were doing that, while you were, you know, working in that, for that uh, firm prior to starting your own, was there something or maybe a few things that you really learned, you know, post law school, pre starting your own business that have helped you along the way? Yeah, I think I working at a big top tier big law firm really taught me um uh, what how to manage relationship with clients. Um that really taught me to be hyper responsive to clients. Um to hit deadlines, uh, the deadlines, you know, especially in a in a corporate context, are tremendously important. Um, and yeah, it it showed me the type of work product that clients expect. Um, so I knew that if I could replicate that work product, but charge clients much less for the same product, that that I could have a successful business. And that's essentially my business model is, is I charge big corporate clients, private equity firms, pension funds, you know, a fraction of the price that a big law law firm will charge them. But I'm providing them with that big law service, that that same sort of work product that they can expect from from a Skadden Arps. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of what big law taught me was was you know if you want to be successful you need to be hyper responsive to your clients and their needs uh, and your work product needs to be top notch so once you started Mur murdoch legal you you, you had kind of learned that from your previous experience but was there anything that you quickly realized that maybe you you didn't know that you didn't know um well i, I so when I started Murdoch Legal, I mean, I, I embarked on this new path of working with with startups. Um, and, you know, I, I when you work with tech startups, you're you're confronted with a host of random regulatory issues and transactional issues. And, and yeah, you just there's a certain amount of learning as you go. Um, and, you know, lucky for me. I, I have a legal network in place with a lot of mentors and peers that I can I can turn to for guidance and advice. But um, yeah, the, the work was much less predictable when I started my business. Um, and, you know, I, I confronted many issues from a legal point of view and also from a business entrepreneur point of view that were new to me that I had to work through, that I had to make a few mistakes on. Um, but that's how you learn, right? You said you mentioned that your uh, your firm is one hundred percent virtual. That is that's kind of unique um, relative to some of the other attorneys that I that I speak with on this show. Uh, has it always been that way? Uh, virtual. Yeah. So I when I started my business, um, I did have an office. I was working in a loft in in downtown Montreal with a friend of mine. Who didn't who had another business that wasn't a law firm and i kind of rented out half the law space and i had a couple desks there and when i brought on my my first associate um she came to the office a couple times a week uh, and i trained her there and we worked together there um but then the the office space renovated um and an insurance company essentially bought out the whole floor of the building i was on um, so I was, 
I was back to ground zero and I was looking for office space and you know the leases were two three thousand dollars a month and at that time I had two people working for me and I asked them hey do you guys actually want to come into an office you know this is three or four years before COVID and they both said no much rather work from home and so I said all right let's let's try it Um, and I actually found that my associates were more productive when they worked from home. Uh, and then I also said, you know, I took it a step further and I said, hey, as long as you guys are hitting your deadlines and, and you know, your, your work is good, I don't actually really care where you are. If you want to be on a beach in Costa Rica, uh, you know, as, as long as you're in, you know, in a time zone where you can still respond to emails and you know, make your deadlines and and your work is good, uh, I have no problems. So that sort of allowed me to to expand my net a little bit. And now some of my associates have been with me for nine years. One of them lives in Paris. One of them lives in New York. A um, couple of them are, are outside of Toronto. Um, and we meet up in person about once or twice a year. We have team meetups. Um, but on the whole, yeah, it, it I find it works very well. And as you know, when COVID hit, um, you know, a lot of companies had to tr- transition to this virtual model. But, you know, we just we just went as business as usual. Um, and before COVID, everyone thought I was nuts. They just didn't understand that I had a virtual law firm uh, with no kind of office space. But now now it's everyone sort of seems to understand it a little bit more. And yeah, if anything, I, I kind of think my firm was on the cutting edge with respect to that. I, I think we're going to see a more of a trend of of law firms decreasing their their overhead and and going virtual. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what are some in terms of Murdoch Legal? Then, what are some maybe some big milestones or moments um, that you look back on that you're particularly proud of? Um, I think. I think that a big milestone was uh, when I hired my my first associate, a lady called Talia, um, and I knew the relationship was going to work, uh, and I could trust her to to manage my firm. Um, another another milestone was when I I started to garner enough work that money ceased to be a a stress point for me and my family um that i could sort of take that worry off the table uh and i had enough kind of stable monthly revenues uh that i i knew i had built a successful business um and i didn't have to worry about vacations or going out to restaurants or sending my kids to private schools uh that i knew i had all that taken care of um and that's when my my firm's revenue hit about a, a million US annually uh was was kind of when I hit that comfort point. Um and then yeah, and then also when I realized that that I didn't have to, you know, kind of devote sacrifice my whole life for my job. I mean, my job being a lawyer is an important important part of my identity and I like it, but um it's not it's not all of who I am, you know. I'm equally a, a dad and I'm equally an outdoor enthusiast. Um and uh when I real when I realized I had kind of built this law firm that allowed me to to travel, to be a father, to not worry about money, um, and to manage a team. Um you know, I look around at some of my peers who are still in big law, uh, and I compare my life, and uh, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it any day of the week. I'm, I'm very happy. I think I found a nice balance. Um, so, kind of when I, when I hit that threshold a couple of years ago, or three or four years ago, um, that was a big milestone for me. Yeah, I was going to say, would, would you say that it makes you unique, maybe among attorneys, to have that kind of like. Uh perspective on yourself that's more well-rounded rather than just completely law driven I, I think so i think um you know i i have a, a lot of attorney friends and and some of them they just they they really are passionate about what they do and they want to work those long work hours and for them it doesn't even feel like work um that's just that's just what they want with their lives and that's fair enough um 
but for me i i think i think law i i'm inspired by it and i like running the business um but i definitely see it as as not the overarching theme in my life i just see it as as one strand um and i i think that makes me somewhat unique as an attorney and when i was starting my business i had just relocated to montreal and i'm a i'm a new york lawyer so most of my clients were in new york so i was driving back and forth from montreal to new york to to manage my firm to meet new clients and i remember i was i listened to this was 10 years ago and i listened to tim ferriss's book the 4 hour work week uh, and that really influenced the way i built my business um just just this perspective you know maybe i'm not going to work 4 hours but i certainly don't need to work 80 and it really motivated me to kind of build a team uh train them up and outsource the work to my team. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I have one more question for you, but first tell me a little bit more, about, tell me how people can find out more about uh, Murdoch Legal. Um, they can go to my website, murdochlegal.com. Uh, disclaimer, it needs a bit of an update. Uh, one problem with having enough clients to keep you and your whole team busy is, uh, Sometimes, you know, I, I don't have to do a lot of marketing or PR or travel around the U.S. Uh, meeting new clients. Um, if anything, the, the workflow is almost too much. So I've, I've devoted a little bit less resources to my website, but it's we're coming up on the 10 year mark. And I promised my team I was going to do a full website overhaul. So stay tuned. But you can go to my website, MurdochLegal.com. You can go to my LinkedIn page. Uh, Patrick Murdoch. Uh, you can Google me. There's an interesting article that came out. Uh, Bloomberg Business wrote it, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe five years ago. And it was about my transition out of big law into a uh, sole practitioner or, you know, boutique law firm, business owner. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a cool perspective for lawyers who are in big law but are kind of afraid to take the leap. Um, so you could check out that article uh, or, you know, you could send me uh, an email at Patrick at Murdoch legal.com. Uh, always happy to chat with young lawyers who are, who are looking to branch out and, and uh, take some risk with their legal career. Last question for you. I'm sure you have received a lot of advice over the years during your, your legal journey. What would you say is either the best or the worst piece of advice you've received? You can think of it. Um, I remember a, a partner at, at uh, Sherman Sterling telling me that, you know, if, if you really don't like what you do, uh, it's not worth sticking it out because, you know, law can be so consuming um that it can just kind of take over your life and you know before you know it 20 years has flashed by so yeah i i think i think it's it's i mean his point was you know look before you embark down this path you know really really take a hard look and and ask yourself if it's right for you if, if you're if you're you know following your passion um and if you're not you know, switch it up because life's too short. Yeah, yeah. Great advice. Hey, uh, Patrick, it's been great to talk to you today. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to 15 Minutes. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.